Hey everybody, this is Kelly. Welcome back to another episode of Ask a Therapist. Today the question we're addressing is how do you have the conversations with the people in your lives about a diagnosis that you received, especially if they are not supportive of you seeking help? So let's dive in. The answer to that question that I wish I could say to you is cut people out of your life. They don't support you because you don't need that kind of negativity. Unfortunately, that's not reality. It would be nice to think that everybody that we love will support us getting healthier. It'd be nice to think that everyone in our lives is also on a journey to improve their mental health and their processing. It would be great if everyone in the world understood things like therapy. It would be ideal if we were able to help people to understand that whether our diagnosis affects them or not, it does not make it their problem. That's not the reality in which we live right now. Unfortunately, we live in a situation where if you tell a loved one that you are dealing with depression, the loved ones that are less familiar with depression are gonna wonder what they did to make you dislike your life. And if you tell a loved one that you've been diagnosed with anxiety, they're gonna wonder what you're so stressed out about. It is the unfortunate reality that many, many people just don't understand therapy, diagnosis, or what to do in the wake of a diagnosis. And that's one of the reasons that I started doing these videos in the first place. That's one of the reasons why on social media, I request people ask me questions that you want a therapist to answer completely honestly. The people whose questions I'm answering are not my clients, and so I'm gonna be a little more candid than I would if we were in a session, right? We see the world through a lens. The lenses that we use to see the world are informed by our own experiences. And so, for instance, if you are someone who has been struggling with anxiety and you have a parent or a spouse or a loved member of your circle, maybe somebody who's related to you who also exhibits signs of anxiety and they have never gotten help for it, they've never had it diagnosed, they've never worked through that for themselves, to them it might seem strange that you've gone to get a diagnosis and that you've gone to get help and that you're seeking support and direction for something with which they have just sort of plotted along and maybe done really well for themselves in. Diagnosis is tricky in private practice when you are not involving health insurance and you're not involving things like special compensations made for school and stuff. Diagnosis takes on a little bit of a different kind of a tone. I definitely know a fair amount of therapists who are reluctant to give a diagnosis to a client unless they specifically need it because unless you are dealing with insurance or dealing with a primary care physician and things like medication and stuff, giving an actual diagnosis can sometimes be more harmful than helpful. It really depends on the client. And so for me, because I'm not on any insurance panels or anything like that, I don't always give a diagnosis to my clients, even if I have one. Having one helps me to plan for our sessions and to really be able to mark improvement or or sometimes lack thereof. But giving the diagnosis to the client really is a case-by-case -case basis when it is not necessary for other things like paperwork and that sort of thing. That aside, I'm assuming that the person wanting to know the answer to this question is diagnosed and has had a hard time of it with the loved ones that surround them when they talk about their diagnosis. And so I've definitely seen this in the lives of people I care about. I absolutely saw it while I was in school. We talked a lot about this kind of a thing and um, they actually had some people come in and have conversations with us about what it was what it was like to start to make improvements in therapy and then to go home or to go visit a loved one and to really had that questioned in a way that made them feel devalued. There's a couple of different things happening here in this question. And the first thing that I would encourage the person to do is to speak with the person who gave the diagnosis. Okay, so that's number one. Be real with them about how you anticipate that diagnosis affecting your life. Maybe if you are still seeing them, you will share with them how that diagnosis is affecting your life, similar or different to how you expected it to. It also is very important for us to remember that when we are conversing with people, every human brain is constantly assigning meaning to things. And that meaning is informed by our own personal understanding of things. And so if you're speaking to somebody for whom counseling has not been something they've ever explored, 
for whom support outside of themselves or a few close people is not something that they find appropriate, they're less likely to be supportive of you doing that. Someone's support of you getting healthy does not dictate whether or not you getting healthy is a good thing. Someone's support of you getting healthy or lack of support of you getting healthy could dictate how hard it is to get there. So one option is really, really decide if you need to share your diagnosis with people or not. And that's not to say that there's anything shameful about having a diagnosis in the mental health field. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, what do you gain and what does your relationship gain and what does the person gain out of knowing what your specific diagnosis is? And the reason I ask that is because for you, things might be falling into place. You get a diagnosis, all these things make sense. Oh my goodness, all these things that I've wondered about that I've been trying to figure out for years maybe, it's finally there and I'm so happy and I feel so seen and I feel so supported and I want to share that with people who love me. That sharing is for you. And when you're sharing for you something that is going to impact other people in a way that may remove some of your joy, um, I would caution you to think a little bit before you actually did any sharing. Again, it's not that there's something to be ashamed of of having a diagnosis. It's does sharing this further my recovery? Does sharing this help our relationship? Does sharing this potentially put me in a place where my process could be in danger? Y'all, when somebody loves you, they want what's best for you, okay? When that doesn't seem to be the case, if you're looking at somebody and the way that they're responding to you does not seem like they want what's best for you, that doesn't mean always they don't love you. It means there's something going on for them that's getting in the way. And when there's something going on for them that's getting in the way, that's not about you. But you have to be in a place in your personal journey to be able to accept that that is not about you and that's not your fault. And so again, it depends on what the diagnosis is, whether or not it is smart to share it with somebody at any given time. It might be one of those things that you need to live into a little bit and really feel and do some work in and and just sort of process on your own before you let somebody in who could potentially be toxic to that recovery is time. If it is somebody that you can do this with, if it's not somebody you live in a home with and it's not somebody you're dependent on for survival, I would suggest to you that you begin to work with your therapist about boundaries. Um, what is it that you're willing to share? What is it you're not willing to share? For instance, I know with parents of minors, one of the hardest things to do is not grill them about what happened in their therapy session because you want to know. Because you feel like the more you know, the more you can help. And while that might very well be true, the things that you need to do to help, you might not be either prepared to do in a place to do, they might not be in a place to receive it. There are steps that need to be taken in any sort of a recovery situation that cannot be skipped if the process is going to do what it's supposed to do. You cannot control anyone else. You have no ability to control anyone else. You are responsible for no one else. You're responsible for you. You can decide how you respond to their response. You can decide who you do and do not allow in your life. And you can decide who you do and do not allow into your process. You have that right. As a whole individual, you have that right. Don't forget, there are people out there who benefit from you not being healthy. There are people out there who benefit from you having less than perfect boundaries. There are people out there who benefit from you being in a place where you need to earn their love because they need people to feel like they need to earn their love. It's not your responsibility to fix that for them. You can't fix other people. I don't necessarily know that other people need to be fixed anyway. I don't think it's really, I don't think that's what it's about. I don't think it's about fixing. But either way, you can't change other people, but you can change how that is allowed to influence your health and how that is allowed to influence your future. You have that right. Sometimes people go to therapy and they seem to those outside like they're causing more problems as they're getting better. In reality, they're just standing up for themselves more and they're understanding what right treatment is and what is fair to assume and expect from the people who love them. That can be difficult for the people around us. 
Absolutely. I would encourage you once again, once you have a diagnosis, dealing with how to share that and who to share that with and how you allow people into that part of you is key in your talk therapy session. So if you are receiving a diagnosis, I also would recommend that you are continuing to do therapy because that will be a great place for you to work out your individual like, hey, this is how this person responded and this is where our relationship is now because of it and this is how I feel. That's where you can work that stuff out in a way that will be productive and in the framework of what you have going on and you're dealing with. It is okay for you to say, listen, insert person here, I love you and I know that you love me, but I am not able to take this on right now. The bottom line here about diagnosis, family, loved ones, their response to you is that your recovery is in your own hands. You have the right to do what you need to do to make yourself healthier. You also have the right to withhold information if it jeopardizes your recovery or your return to health. You do not owe anyone an explanation for who you are. You do not owe it to anyone to define for them what is wrong with you so that they feel more comfortable and so that they're able to understand what box to put you in. You don't belong in a box. None of us do. And I hope that you're getting that from your counseling relationship. Hope that you're understanding that. You don't belong under a specific defined set of rules for who you're supposed to be and who you should be in the future and how you should relate to other people. I am a person who believes that we owe each other basic human kindness. But beyond that, you do not owe a piece of your life and your time and your energy to somebody who is not interested or invested in seeing the best version of you come out, even if it may be difficult for them to be able to process. And even if you being the best version of you means that they may have to change some things or do some things for themselves or figure some things out for themselves, if that's what it means, that's still should be okay. And if it's not okay with them, really searching into the necessity of that relationship in your life would be my biggest tip because you deserve to be healthy. You deserve to like who you are and you deserve to feel safe and you deserve to feel supported. If you can't get those things in that relationship, the question becomes, is that relationship essential for the betterment and the furthering of your life? So that's the short and fairly generic answer to a very specific question, but there you go. I hope that you next time we'll be talking about imposter syndrome, which is a favorite topic of mine, and I love to hear what you think about it. So drop a comment or send me a message. A lot of you communicate with me via private message because some of the questions you're asking are a little too personal and that's totally fine. There's always ways to private message me on every platform I put this on. So I hope you have a fantastic day and I hope you're doing well and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.